Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today we got a good friend of mine, John Anthony. I've known him for you know over three years or so. Um, he is a dating expert when it comes to dating, you know, modern women. And you know, we see like all these memes and all this bitching and complaining about modern women. And you know, yeah. I wanted to have him on because here's the truth, guys. <laughs> whether you whether you guys want to admit it or not. I would say probably 80, 90% of the people who are watching my channel, trying to get in better shape, most of it is to raise your um, appearance for the sake of attracting better women. I don't know why a lot of men have a hard time admitting this. It's it's okay to admit. But, you know, when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I wanted to get in shape mostly to look better for women. I mean, let's, let's be honest. And for some reason, you know, people are having a hard time, hard time admitting that, but I just want you guys to know it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to admit that. I think it's like, John, what's the statistic now? I think it's like 80% of men are, are not having sex. Like they're involuntarily it's celibate. 30, 30% uh, between 18 and 29 haven't had sex in the past year. Wow. So it is now one, okay. one in three. So, yeah, yeah which is crazy, right? So, I mean, just and, statistically and, speaking, I mean, this is kind of a, a problem. And, and here's the thing. I mean, you know, I talk to a lot of guys and say, well, you know, I try to get to the motivation. Like, okay, so why do you want to get in shape? And a lot of the times I say, well, I want to be healthier. And are you finding it? it I know that's bullshit. Okay, I know it's bullshit. What, what do they mean by health? No, they want to look better. But why do they want to look better? Yes, I mean, it's it's you do get treated by society better compared compared to when you're in shape versus when you're fat or if you're very, yeah. very skinny. But the other half is they, they do want more respect and attention from women. Um, why do you think it is that this is tough for people to admit? Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of ego involved, right? So a lot of, I've been coaching uh, guys to get better with girls now for over 10 years. A lot of guys are afraid to admit they need help with girls because they're like, well, I'm a man. And it, that means I'm admitting that I'm, you know, not as good as I could be or, or I'm a lesser of a man or whatever. And so a lot of people are like, you know, oh, I'm doing just fine, whatever. But but everybody wants, you know, access to hotter girls and, and to have the process work better so that they have better chances with any particular girl, right, if they're single. And mm -hmm. I think the, the physique thing is the same thing. Like people are seeing on Instagram all the time different guys that are all shredded. A lot of them are on a, a whole bunch of shit, right? But they're comparing themselves to that. And a lot of guys are, are you know, they just want to look better because they think that'll solve a lot of their problems, right? And from my experience, yeah. getting in shape, you know, from my own personal experience, but also with my clients and, and guys that have worked with you, um, that have worked with both of us, right? You get more attention. Like if you walk up to a girl in a cold approach at a bar or club or during the daytime, if you're in good shape, a lot of times they'll give you a little more attention up front. But then the guy still needs dat dating strategy and tactics to move them through the process. He needs to know how to keep the conversation going, how to text, how to run the date, close the date. So I'm like you where I break everything down systematically and I just put them through a process and remove all their bottlenecks, right? Mm -hmm. But I think um, getting in shape especially helps with online dating and the pictures and all that stuff as well. Like once I got a much better physique, I started getting complimented all the time. I started matching with a lot more girls, a lot hotter girls, et cetera. So it just makes the, the dating game a lot easier. Right. But you still there's no substitute for, for learning the proper strategy and tactics. I've had guys come on the program that were like six foot six. Jack, I'm six foot four myself, but I, I've had clients that were like virgins that were six, six, totally jacked. And they're like, yeah, the girls respond positively when I, when I walk up, but then I run out of stuff to say or I mess up over text because I have no idea how to text or I go on a date and we sit there for three hours and the girl eventually gets bored and leaves. Right. Or they get their back, the girl back home. They don't know how to escalate. <clears throat> so there's still like things that you have to do at every level to maximize your chances and increase your chances. But, but being in shape gives you like a big advantage up front and, and on the apps as well, I think. Well, yeah, like you said, like people yeah. just respect you more in general. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing I'm, you know, I've been talking with this with a, a good friend of mine and we're trying to like, we're trying to like zoom out and try to figure out, okay, so what is, what's the void people are generally trying to fill with the fitness thing. And yeah. 
you know, subconsciously as men, we're, we're after kind of one thing. It's to attract the highest quality woman possible. Like, I don't know why we can't just admit that. Like, yeah, do, do we really, do us men really need to be rich? No, dude, there was, there was a period of time where I was, I lived in an apartment right when I moved to Florida. I had a mattress on the floor, a TV, and an Xbox, and I was the happiest I've ever been. Like, we don't yeah. need all this shit, but why do we get all this shit? We get all this shit to show that we can provide security. Why? For higher quality women. Because we know higher quality women do not want a guy who lives in an apartment on a mattress with a TV, even though that's that's great for us. But we really need to... We really need to acknowledge the fact, the reason why we're doing a lot of this. And it's our innate nature to reproduce, reproduce, have children, whatever, families, whatever. And, you know, I just want to say it's like it's okay. It's okay to admit that. And just like, you know, we assess women's, um, you know, quality based on, you know, their their appearance usually it's like it's like a genetic thing like we don't want to reproduce with fat gross women because that lowers the likelihood of having healthy offspring they're going to assess us based on a variety of factors and and like the fitness will get your foot in the door so what they'll view you as is okay this guy takes care of himself he takes himself seriously he has self-respect that's most of it i don't know if it's so much the physical oh i love arms and abs i think it's more this guy has enough determination dedication and ambition to take care of himself therefore he's going to take care of me and our children kind of thing That's yeah probably exactly yeah subconscious if a guy's if a guy's out of shape or, or he's overweight or whatever right it just communicates like sloppiness i think even in in the workplace in, in any in any kind of domain right people are going to take someone less seriously if they're out of shape because it really says something about the person right yeah yeah so but but I would imagine, you know, I would imagine that most most guys think it's like, okay, if I get in shape, if I, you know, take care of my finances, whatever, that's all I need to do. And, you know, I, you know, I'm finding out being in a long term relationship. Holy shit. And, and I've spoken with you about all that for weeks and yep. weeks. There's a lot more to it when it comes to yep. not only like getting a woman, getting in a relationship, but maintaining it as well. So, guys, you guys got to realize when you get in shape and you get visible abs, it's not over. Like, there's a lot more you're going to need to do. And that's the kind of stuff you teach, right? I think people yeah. will use. Yeah. So, I, I take a, a systematic approach, basically, kind of how you do. So, so I break it into it's almost like a sales funnel. So, at the top, like the three major sources that I teach my clients to meet chicks is online with apps like Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, at nightclubs and bars, which is referred to as night game. And then during the daytime, walking up to strangers like at streets, malls, cafes, etc. And all those lead to phone numbers, right? And then with the phone numbers, it depends on your texting skill to be able to bring the phone numbers down to dates. And then you're just lining up dates on the, on the calendar. You can do coffee or drinks. Or I have scripts that I give my clients that allow the girls to come straight to the house and skip the coffee or drinks most of the time. And then I teach them what to do once the girl's back at their house in order to get the hookup with the best chances and then how to keep the girls around. So I basically have, a, have an eight-week program where I I systematically teach them how to get a whole lot of dates, close those dates, and then whatever their goal is, whether it's sleeping with more girls or getting their dream girlfriend or wife or whatever, they now have a whole bunch of options to choose from versus, you know, m- most guys don't have any options or, or the options aren't that good because it's just like, who do I know through my friend circles or who do I know at work or, or who's in my apartment building or whatever, but they're not able to generate a whole bunch of opportunities out of nothing, right? So I teach guys how to optimize their online profile, how to maximize their skills walking up to strangers in public, and then how to text properly. I give them the exact scripts and exactly how to run the dates, close the dates, and keep the ones they want. So my clients are typically, you know, they lose their virginity or break their dry spell or whatever the results were before. They start getting like one to two new hookups a week, which comes out to like 50 to 100 a year. And then when you do this for a long time, right? I've been, I've been doing the game stuff for like 20 years now. Like I've now slept with 1,769 different girls, right? And people hear that claim and they're like, no way, that's BS. I've kept exact track and on my channel, I have like over an hour long video that that goes through all the proof of of how I'm able to demonstrate that, right? But it's just repeating a systematic process over and over and over. But my clients, 
most of the guys just want to find a girl they connect with really well and then they they settle down with her but but you have to go on a bunch of dates and see who you connect with the best and you have to have skills because what happens is most guys bottleneck so like they don't know how to walk up to a stranger in public or they're too afraid so they never get any phone numbers from girls at bars and clubs or during the daytime and then most people have very shitty tinder profiles because they didn't get professional pictures and so they don't get many good matches and then they're kind of dead in the water so i teach them how to meet the hottest girls in public how to set up the tinder profile properly with pro pictures and we have a team of hot girls that pre-selects the top pictures from the batch of pro photos and then they're just getting tons of phone numbers and then my tech scripts convert those phone numbers to dates and then so most new clients get their schedules packed full of dates within like one or two weeks and we're gonna have a, a link in the description for anybody that's interested in in training with me so what if but, so yeah. okay so we talk about you know that that tremendous number of yours now and in, mm-hmm. in in most guys most guys probably don't want that. I mean, so no. you use it as as a benchmark Proof. for how effective your approach is. Yeah. But what well, about the Yeah, guys? most industry charlatans. So I want to show people I can actually right, get them the, right. the result. They oh, want. is it, every yeah. industry is absolute charlatans. That's why I use a lot of testimonials with normal guys, not people taking fucking yep. training growth hormone. But um, yep. I, I would imagine for most men I've talked to, they kind of want a relationship. You know, yeah. they want a partner. They want a long-term monogamous thing. Is is, yep. is what you teach going to help them with that? Yeah. So in practice, what normally happens is like I we set up that system for them, clear the bottlenecks. And what I mean by bottlenecks is like if you suck at texting, like your phone numbers aren't going to turn to dates. If you suck at running dates, the girls aren't going to come home with you from the coffee or drinks to hook up, right? If they suck at, at what they do back at the house – they're not going to get the hookup back at the house. And so there's like these blocks. And, and my job is just to give them the optimal moves and clear the blocks so that they can just have the best chances with any stranger in public or any girl on the online apps for the rest of their life. But in practice, what happens is they end up getting a whole bunch of dates. They go on the dates and see who they connect with the best, which, which of these girls are the hottest, coolest girls that they have the best chemistry with and the best sex with. And then they usually pick their favorite one right mm-hmm. after one or two months and if it doesn't work out with that girl then they can go and repeat the process again and generate a bunch more good options and then choose from a place of abundance again because what's happening like as we said like one third of guys aren't having any sex w- within the past year and then the ones that are a lot of times it's girls that aren't hot enough like they prefer the girl to be a lot hotter or they're choosing from you know one or two options or, or maybe zero right versus like a whole bunch of options like i get my clients to have like an overload of options so that they can say, okay, that one's my favorite. That one checks the most boxes because otherwise, you know, like, look at how most people, they settle, dude. Most people, yeah, they're settling. Exactly. All my, most my friends. Yeah. And and that's how it is for most guys. So they're with a girl that's not very attractive or a girl that treats them like shit or maybe both. And they just accept it because they have no other options. Well, that's, I think that's why this is important. Like, you know, like my, you know, my girlfriend's going to watch this and she's going to go, she's going to go, oh, no, no, no girl wants a guy that's going out and, you know, sleep on all his women. I was like, okay. But the thing is you, they don't understand it from a man's perspective, you know, and then yeah. we kind of, you know, we kind of look around at people we know. I would say most of her friends who are married have a fucking catastrophe of a marriage because maybe, yeah. You know, the, the guy, the guy, usually the guy settled. Um, yep. Some of my friends, fucking catastrophe. So the thing is, the thing is about this, it's like, okay, there's no, there's no valor in meeting a woman that you hate, staying with them forever, getting married and having a miserable fucking life. It's okay yep. to like try to find a good one. And the thing is, you know, yep. it, people, people should probably learn how to do that effectively because okay you know myself my friends yes we we want you know my my sisters have families and stuff that's what we want but we also want that to not be a fucking disaster and since most yeah. guys are settling because the statistic is isn't it like 90 percent of men get no matches on online dating um yeah I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty high it, and, and the, the reason the major reason is because they don't have pro photos so like it do, you don't need to look like a model or, or be super physically attractive in order to crush Tinder. 
what the process we do, like the exact process is the guy signs up for my, my training. We pair him with a professional photographer in his city. Like we partner with this company that can pr place a, a high quality portrait photographer in any English speaking city around the world. And so he gets these pro photos and we have like a 40 page guide that teaches them exactly how to get the photo shoot done. It's like, here's the, the types of photos that work extremely well. And here's our like best past client profiles and my profile. And there's breakdowns by the hot girls on my team. And they say like, these photos work because of this, this works because it conveys this, this works because it conveys this. So they show this to the photographer and they have a really good idea how to get the photo shoot taken. Then they go and get, you know, usually between like one and 300 pictures in a typical photo shoot. And then we have the hot girls go through and pick out the best five. So most guys are just using average photos on their phone that they think look good, but they don't know what a female is going to be attracted to, right? They don't have female attraction circuitry. So by having hot girls already go through and pick out your best five photos from the pro photos that are already, you know, like set up to be really good based on the guide that already puts them like way ahead of everybody. And then we apply something called face app, which is just an app that improves facial aesthetics, but it doesn't catfish the person, but it, it ends up boosting their aesthetic rating, usually like one or two points. And so I tell guys, look at it like this. Most guys are using average photos, pro photos bring you up here. And then having girls pick the best five pro photos brings you here. And then we apply face app. You're literally showcasing the best possible version of yourself. And then I write each guy's bio for him. I have them send me their accomplishments, their cool experiences, hobbies, skills, and interests. And then I, I craft a thing using a, a formula that I have that really just kind of like hits the girl in the face with all these cool things that the guy has to offer. Right. Like world traveler, favorite trip was blah, blah, blah. Amazing chef. My whatever is famous wink face. Right. There's like certain certain things I do. You can spin their job in a, in a high value way. Like instead of computer programmer, you could write lead a tech team. Right. Or, or CEO of my own company. And so the girl sees like these really good pictures and a really good bio that blows her away. And now the guy's getting like a ton of matches, like a, a massive increase in the quantity and quality of matches. It's close to almost like a 10 X improvement typically from what they were getting before. And then the guy's sitting there with all these matches and he's like, what do I do next? And I give them the exact scripts to message on Tinder that'll turn those matches into phone numbers. And it, it tells what to do if she ignores, if she has any objections to giving her phone number. Right. And it, it's kind of just like a, a greased slide. It's like a domino effect. So the opener has a high chance of response. And then after the opener, the ones that follow are just leading them towards the number very easily. And then I do the same thing over text. I give them the exact text messages. So it turns those phone numbers into dates. So the guy basically gets a pro photo shoot, ends up with a ton of matches, plugs into the, the Tinder scripts, gets phone numbers, plugs into the text scripts, gets dates. And so every new client within a week is just getting flooded with dates. And that's before we've taught them how to walk up to strangers in public doing cold approach, but he already now has like an overload of dates. And then we just have to refine how they're running their dates, how they present themselves on the dates, how they make the date non platonic, how they invite the girl back to the house afterwards, how they answer objections to come home with them. But it's all I'm, I map it all out. So there's no more guesswork. And the, and the clients all say, Oh, it feels like I have the cheat codes now with dating because before it was kind of a mystery, right? Like we don't get taught this stuff in schools. And a lot of the shit on YouTube is just plain wrong. Right. Like someone said in the beginning of the of the stream here, um, I don't want John Anthony with weird red pill stuff. I'm actually not a red pill coach. And I, I actually speak out against all the red pill coaches because red pill guys, for those that aren't familiar, are basically just like misogynists. They just teach guys to be resentful and confrontational yeah. against women. And they say all women are going to fuck you over. All women are. Slut. That's all bullshit. And the guys that say that stuff aren't those guys aren't really getting girls anyways. But you, I've, sh I've made videos showing how. A lot of those guys, girlfriends or wives are like objectively below average looking. So they're just, you know, trying to be this theoretical alpha tough guy. That's like, oh yeah, all women are below us and blah, blah, blah. And I, I make a lot of videos fighting against that. All guys really need to know how to do is how to message on Tinder, how to build their profile on Tinder, how to text, how to run a date, how to walk up to a stranger in public, what to do once the girl's back home and what to do after the hookup so that they can keep the ones that they want or the one that they want. And that's it. And then they can go forth and execute that for the rest of their life. And that's why I really like your fitness stuff because you actually fix the problem, right? Guys need help getting their dream physique. You put them on the, the fastest route to do that. And then the problem solved after three or four months, they're like, great. Like I've never seen results like this. And it's the same in my program, 
right? They bounce from coach to coach to coach in the industry. Everyone promises the world and delivers nothing. And then I say, okay, now we're going to fix it for real. And, and these guys are like, well, I've failed with five or six other coaches. I just don't think this will work for me. And I say, listen, after you do this pro photo shoot, you're going to get lots of matches. There's no way around it. After you plug in these scripts, you're going to have lots of dates. And it happens consistently with like every single client. And, and then they have a new set of problems. It's like, how do I fit new girls into my schedule? Which one do I actually like the most, right? How do, or, or if they're trying to date a bunch at once, how do I manage like four or five? Or, you know, I, I personally have like 17 different girls on the side that I try to manage with all the business responsibilities and gym and all that stuff. And I live with a girl. We have like a one way open thing and, and we've been together almost four years. But she, you know, understands that I really like to see other girls. That's a big thing for me. So I just have a side place, as you know. And so I have like the the long term relationship with the girl that I live with, and we have three dogs in a house, and then I have the side place where I see all the all the ones on the side. So, but every everybody is free to set up whatever situation they want, right? They can get a girlfriend, right. they can just go on lots of dates and, and sleep with lots of girls if that's what they want. They can get some regulars, you know, which is referred to as like a rotation. I don't tell them what their goal should be. I just give them the tools to you know, take any stranger in public or from the online apps and move them down into a romantic or sexual relationship. Right. So guys, let's clarify this. Just because John lives a particular lifestyle doesn't mean he's coaching all of you to live that same lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. You know, John chooses this particular way to live, which, which isn't practical for most guys, obviously, but you know, I don't want yeah. people to think just because this is what you do, that that's what you're teaching. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Not at all. As you said, most guys in practice, they want to go on some dates and see who they connect with and then get more serious with one girl. Most guys don't want to sleep with lots of girls and that's fine. There's no like right answer. I enjoy like right now I'm living in Brazil, but I, I lived in a lot of like hot girl places. I lived in Ukraine and Poland in Vegas and Miami and San Diego. Um, I was in London and Portugal for a while, Puerto Rico, but I've been in Brazil now for about four years and the chicks are just really, really hot here. There's like a fitness culture. So the girls really take care of themselves. There, there's not much obesity like the U S and, and they, they have good genetics, right? So there's just like lots of nines on the apps, lots of nines in real life. And they're, re they're very receptive and they're pretty down to earth chicks. There's not a lot of like, you know, games or fronting or anything like that. So, you know, for me, I just, I like to be able to regularly sleep with new hot girls and, and I enjoy the whole, you know, like courtship process of, of meeting new ones and, and sleeping with new ones. But I also want, you know, someone I can share my life with and, and, and grow with and all that stuff. So I try to have the best of both worlds, but, but it's definitely, yeah, um, for most men, that's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep in mind, guys, I mean, most of you're probably, you know, you're going to have to pick one of those. <laughs> someone someone's asking about uh paying for dates you want to put yeah. that up yeah um so my stance for for the guy paying for the for the date is that he should just pay for the first date uh, that doesn't make you a simp that doesn't make you a provider it's traditional that if you invite a girl out on a date you should just pay for the first date after yeah. the first date if it's a really big deal to you you can suggest that you guys split it from there on but you know and you don't you shouldn't do dinner dates for the first date it's not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily but you can get away with just doing coffee or drinks. And if any girl is like insisting on dinner and, and is too good for coffee or drinks, that might be a gold digger or, or a red flag, right? I've been on probably over 2,000 dates and the vast majority were just coffee or drinks. I quit drinking like four years ago, but I just do coffee dates now. I, or I would prefer they just come straight to the house, right? I, let, me, let me tell your, your followers actually, here's something you guys can do. If you get a phone number from a girl in public or from the online apps, Here's how you would set the girl to come straight to your house over text without having to meet for a public date first um, using like the drinking route, right? And there's a, I can I can say the non-drinking one as well, but basically I say over text, when are you free to meet up? She gives some days. I pick the soonest day. Okay, let's plan for Wednesday at seven. Okay, sounds good. Then I say, do you like wine? And they typically say yes. And I say, cool, we could split a bottle of wine at my new apartment and see how the chemistry is. Do you prefer red or white? And then most of them will, will pick red or white, but some will say, oh, I prefer to meet in public first. So if they say red or white, I'm like, cool, see you Wednesday at seven. And now they're set to come straight to your house, which saves you time and the, the money you would have spent on the date. And it also screens out prudes usually because the prude ones will, will typically say, no, let's meet in public. And then I say, 
Um, LOL, I'm really laid back. Don't worry. Bring pepper spray if you're that worried. So it's like a funny little response to them being worried about going to a stranger's house. And that converts like out of 10 girls, about half will agree to come straight to the house straight away. And the other half will say, I prefer to meet in public. And then the pepper spray line converts another two or three out of those five people that uh, objected initially. So overall, about seven, 70 to 80% will come straight to the house. And that, that other 20 to 30%, um, typically, if you're like, okay, we can meet in public, they have a tendency to like not want to come home after the day anyways, or they come back and, they, and sometimes they don't hook up. Not all the time, but that's what I found. So it's almost like a screen as well. Mm -hmm. And in the non-drinking version, I just say, um, we could relax and talk more and see how the chemistry is at my new apartment. And then I say like, do you need me to call you an Uber? So you, you then, you then close the, the statement with some kind of question. So they either say, yes, I do, or no, I'll drive, but either option involves them coming over. So that's just how it has to be structured. But that, that's like a game changer for most guys, because most people don't know that you can just invite them straight to the house. And a lot of them are totally down for that. Um, the only places where it doesn't really work is, is in like conservative cultures like in Eastern Europe or very religious places. Like, like I've had clients in Utah where it's like very Mormon and stuff. And most girls will, will refuse to come straight to the house, but in, in most yeah, places I mean, in, in Western nations, they'll say yes. But the, you know, some women would just not do that. I couldn't imagine yeah. my girlfriend ever. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of the best ones won't do that. Like the, the yeah. chick that I well, have is not, the, <laughs> yeah, the chick that I have is the, the, the one that I live with, the, the one that I'm closest with that I've been with for four years. She didn't want to come straight to the house the first date. I said, okay, we'll meet in public. I brought her back home after the date. I tried to kiss her. Like we were on a, on the balcony in the apartment I had in Brazil. And she's like, oh, this is too soon. I should be going. And I was like, no, it's cool. We can slow, we can slow down. There's no rush. And she didn't hook up the first date. But that's actually a good sign for a girl right. you yeah, want to get more right. serious with. Right. right. There's a lot of coaches yeah, like, in, in my sphere that are like, oh, if she doesn't hook up on the first date, never see yeah. her again or kick her out. or And, and that's just right. stupid. We got to clarify because, that for people watching. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's not, a, I tell my clients, don't judge the day on did she hook up or not. Judge it on did you have chemistry? Did you have a good time? Can you see yourself hanging out with this girl a bunch more? That's what actually matters, right, for the long term. And if she bangs on date one, date two or three versus date one, it's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, right? You still had a good time on date one. And so, uh, yeah, like a lot of the hottest girls that I banged, like a lot of like the nine fives or um, the ones that were just like the best quality overall didn't close on the first date or yeah. and didn't come straight to the house. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? And, and guy, yeah, I tell I guys just just tell them it's no big deal, you know, and, and then tell them you respect that because it's rare to find that these days. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and you just, you just let it unfold as it unfolds and it, it takes two or three sometimes. Right. So they, right, shouldn't, so you know, they shouldn't look at it like, you know, their whole do or die clothes. Yeah. That's I mean, stupid. And here's, and here's like that's that stupid red pill fucking bullshit simp thing. You know, I go out with a girl, you know, we go out and she doesn't hug up with me and I pay for the dinner and then, oh, well, now you're a simp. It's like, dude, I don't understand. Go make, go make you know, a TikTok about it. I think it's just a bunch of like, there's no way like these men who do this red pill shit get quality women. There's no fucking way. No, they don't. They, and, 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 you can't, and you can't draw a line in the sand like that and say like you can never spend any money on a girl ever and that makes you a simp. Like I, I've ran lots of live boot camp trainings right around the world. Like I was running one in London some years back. And the student was like executing everything perfectly. He was about to leave the club with the girl, but he had brought her over to the bar and they were ordering a drink, but she had already agreed to come back with him, but they were having a drink real quick. And the drinks come and he tells her to pay because in his mind, he thinks, I don't want to be a simp. I don't want to be a provider. Yeah. So he didn't even offer to split. He told the girl to pay and that just blew out the interaction. I'm he like, dude, the girl was gonna... there's no fucking way no. he for her again. No, he didn't. <laughs> and... And the girl and the girl would have come home, came, would have come home with them. Like she had already agreed. Like yeah, we can go back in like ten minutes or whatever. But the the moral of the story isn't like oh you have to buy a girl a drink if you want to bring her home. But if you he had brought her over to the bar and said let's get a drink first, and then when they came he's like you pay for it right. And and the girls are just gonna think that's tacky and cheesy, right? And you can't just think like oh I can never ever spend any money on a girl 
because that makes me a provider. That you Dude, know, that's stupid. Well, geez, like if you ever get married and you have a wife, I mean, you're supposed to be the leader. You're supposed to be the man. Yeah. You provide. You take care of shit. You know, she yep. does the feminine stuff. You do the masculine stuff. And it's like telling a yep. woman to pay for, a, a, you know, giving the bill to a woman is basically calling yourself a fucking pussy. And you're not yeah. and you're not adequate enough to be able to provide for a woman or you're so much of a fucking asshole because it's like, OK, yep. you know, all right, you pay for the drink um, and come home and do my dishes and my fucking laundry. It's like, no, dude, they, you know, I think there's there's an exchange of responsibilities, an exchange of you know, traits, like an exchange of masculine traits and feminine traits. And it's like an even exchange. Um, yep. You know, on a, my, my girl has never paid for a fucking thing ever. And I have mm -hmm. never done a dish or folded a shirt ever. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, it's kind of like, that, it's kinda like that with me and my chick too, right? Yeah. Like I've I, never made I, the bed. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, my, my girl's an engineer. So she actually had like an engineering job in Brazil. As a, as a civil engineer, but we got three dogs and, and, you know, I said, oh, you know, it'd be cooler if you could just stay, stay around. So you're not off working. Cause I, cause my business does well. And, but yeah, she helps, we have a maid as well, but, but yeah, she helps with, with dishes and laundry and stuff like that. I don't usually uh, have to do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's just this whole, oh, you know, don't pay your simp, you're this, you're that. And... Well, the guys that say that stuff aren't even usually getting girls. They, no, they put no, these, no like the red pill guys, they literally teach guys like put a tracking device on your girl's phone so you know her every move. Get all her passwords so you can always check up on her. Like, don't let her look at guys in public. Don't let her order her own food. It's like it, it's it's like this weird theoretical extreme. Like, this is what the ultimate yeah. alpha guy would do, but in practice, it's all ridiculous, and that would scare the shit out of any normal yeah. girl. That, <laughs> that's that's controlling weird behavior. Who says shit like that? Yeah, and we and we were mentioned on because you were on my channel yesterday. We mentioned how, um, you know, like most most chicks would like run for the hills if you tried to pull any of that. And, and if a girl respects you and cares about you, she's not going to cheat or, or wander anyways. And, and trying to like keep them in this little box no. is usually going to backfire. Now, if you if you show up as a man properly, um, masculine leader, just a no dude, just a normal fucking guy. Like, look at. Yep. Like, Look at some relationships where, you know, the father, you know, just show up just like a normal guy. You'll never worry about about a girl like like my girl has. I would never worry about her going. somewhere. Yeah, I don't ever. I don't ever worry either. Ever, the problem is ever. these Put red pill shows. Like, like, yeah, these red pill shows like Fresh and Fit, they convince guys that like every girl's a slut that every girl is trying to trade up, that every girl is trying to fuck you over. That's simply not the case. No. And it's not statistically accurate. No. It's, it's not supported by evolutionary biology. my sisters who are married acting that way, behaving that way. It's yeah. just it's, it's fucking strange. It's just strange. Yeah, or they, they think like some Chad guy is going to come and like fuck their girls behind their backs and all this stuff. Like, if girl, you're a like, I think, like you're, maybe. <laughs> what's that? If you're a pussy and you date a whore, yeah. possibly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean the, the amount of like promiscuity, like girls are like very promiscuous. It's only like five percent, right? Five to ten percent. Dude, yes, like, that's true. It, absolutely. The true. vast majority of girls are happy with the guy that they're with, and and not every guy is like a giga chat, right? They just want the guy to have confidence and and some ambition and, and self respect and be comfortable in his own skin, and that's it. Like you don't need to be, you know, like like these guys that that people see on Instagram that create these unrealistic expectations. Where, where the guys like usually on tons of steroids but but just like well, some yeah giant... with a lamborghini and it's just like dude it's yeah. all fake it's all so yeah. fake it's you know it, the it's just it, it, and it's funny because like i there's this there's this house that i go walking my dogs and we go walking our dogs down in, in south tampa and there's this one house and he's got like two lamborghinis and two audis and a fucking four million dollar <laughs> mansion and a wife and a son that he plays with out in the front yard every single day. So, like, like you know, it's like, is this guy running around, like, ripping through all these all these girls? Is it? No, he's a fucking 55-year-old guy with him. You know, it's just, and that's the problem with social media. They've, they've painted this just weird picture of this yeah. um, false reality of life. And what it's making yep. a lot of men do is, like, they're like, oh, well, I got to look like Giga Chad. I got to get this and get that. 
And I think a lot of men are on this pursuit for all these really ridiculous uh, alkylates in life. And it's mostly because they think that's going to attract them a good woman when, you know. Uh, and it's not. Like, I, I know for a fact, good chicks, women out there, man. chicks it, care about money, like, almost not at all. As long as a guy is, like, able to meet his basic needs and isn't living, like, in poverty. Beyond that, like, the vast majority don't give a shit. If, nope. if the guy is rich or not, you know, that's all like misinformation that's pumped bullshit. out by these red coaches. Absolute fucking bullshit. Yeah, my my sister and brother-in-law, they they got together when neither of them had anything at all. He owns two restaurants yeah. now. They have two kids. I couldn't fathom her being like, oh, you know, maybe I should find a guy with more money. Yeah. What? the fuck yeah there exists girls like that but it's it's like a small percentage again it's just like gold digger girls that are usually pieces of shit right yeah and i i think you know i i couldn't even i couldn't even remember one that i've met that was like that honestly um you know maybe it's just like a stripper or something but it's just like you know <laughs> and that's what's good i mean and that's what i like about you it's like you you kind of you debunk all this stupid bullshit nonsense because men will get themselves in this weird rut this like cynical yep. red pill rut. And I know guys like this. They'll be like, oh, you know, she's really attractive, but you know, she's probably she's probably fucking old dudes for money. It's like, well, dude, yeah. you know, if you're looking <laughs> for that and that's all you see, well, that is all you're gonna see. You're 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 gonna be literally you're gonna be blind to the good opportunities and the good people that you could be surrounding yourself in because you have this mentality that. Every girl's a whore with fake tits, fucking old guys, yep. and then you're never going to end up with with anything good. So, um, it's good that you're kind of like dispelling this bullshit because I think it's fucking up with men's mental health. Yeah, no, big time. Um, you know, and, it, and it's directly the fault of a lot of these red pill channels, like like Fresh and Fit, right? They're teaching guys that the girl is just always looking for the guy with the most money and, and always looking for the guy with the most status and, and blah, 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 blah. And, but what they're, what they're doing is looking at like a tiny little subsection of the female population. It's like Miami only fans trash. Right. And then they're like, this is all girls. And everyone's like, Oh my God. And it's not all girls. It's a tiny little subsection of like really shitty girls. You... And, and guys are being misled about the nature of how females are based on shows like that. Let me ask you about fresh and fit. Do you think that's real? I mean, I, I show on my channel all the time that that uh, fit, you know, the Myron Gaines character. He hit me up. I always show the email. He hit me up for coaching, and he said he's banging between he's banging girls between a four and an eight, meaning like below average to an eight, right? And he mm -hmm. said that no one in his circle knows what they're doing, and he wants me to help him get girls. This was a few years ago. I always show that because he's supposed to be an expert himself, but. He's just like a, I know people that hang out with him in real life. He's just a big misogynist. Like he hates girls. Girls hate him. He doesn't have any regulars that he's seeing. Um, like people that hang out with him, they're like, he's never done even one successful cold approach that they've seen, even though he's tried lots of times. It's, he's just kind of like a, a really nerdy guy that's like trying to get revenge on females. So on his show, the whole draw of the show is just to invite guests on to kick them off. So he invites these trashy OnlyFans girls on the show, you know, berates them trying to be a fake tough guy, and then kicks them off the show. It's basically like Jerry Springer style drama, and that's the only appeal of the show, like in a nutshell. You know, and so people I heard just watch an interesting theory. Off. I heard an interesting theory about Fresh and Fit, and briefly, I heard that it was a um, front to expose disgruntled, dangerous red pill guys and get them to show themselves as a means of stopping their craziness. Have you heard that theory? Um, no, I've never heard that. But they okay, contribute I'll, to I'll, all that because they because they push all the red pill stuff themselves. So, I mean, they're, they're part of the problem, in my opinion. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about this theory in, in private, but... Listen, man, it makes a lot of sense, and I'm under the impression after hearing this theory that uh, Fresh and Fit is actually completely fake. And there's, I don't, and, and oh, it yeah. seems made, there might be I've other motivations. Of videos about this. There might be other motivations behind, you know, um, kind of trying to brainwash young men, but rather than 
getting the real red pill psychopaths to come out of the woodwork, if you know what I mean. Mm. So yeah, I mean they unite all the all the biggest shitheads in the industry. Yeah, yeah. They platform all the all the terrible. Why is it? Why is it that all the biggest shitheads in the industry are going on there? Why did it blow up so quickly? (laughs) Why exposure? Why did they get canceled and move over to a free speech platform to rumble? Well, the reason I did a video about that, the reason they got canceled is they were putting on Ku Klux Klan hats and doing, you know, like hail Hitler signs. And, and, you know, even though they're black, they were, they were, you know, mocking other black people and, and acting like monkeys and stuff like that. So that that's specifically why they got demonetized on YouTube. I know that for sure. What if? What if they were doing it intentionally in order to have to move to Rome? Dude, I'm telling you that they're I don't think, I don't think they're that smart. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I, I don't know, man. The fresh dude can't even form a sentence. I don't I don't know if I'd give him that much. Credit. You know, it's funny because I was watching a, a clip by him and, and the way that, 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 that like every time he tries to talk, he'll yeah, he'll go, but what Dude, one, 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 right? and the gal go, What's that? Right. Yeah, he has a problem speaking. Right, he was a customer service representative, uh, fresh right before this, you know, this so show no that he started. But I, I've done a whole bunch of videos <laughs> exposing that, like they were, they started off just posing next to cars and planes that weren't theirs, and they bought a whole bunch of fake press releases. And then Fresh just started wearing shirts that said CEO and putting on a CEO chain, and everyone's like, "Wow, look at these guys!" But it was all like completely fake, fake smoke and mirror stuff. And I just did a reaction. This is really funny. This will come out later in the week on my channel. Um, there was a, a hater that called into their show and he said, Fresh, I think that your contribution to the show over the past three years could be summed up on like one page. He's like, I wrote it on like one page and I had to make it double space to, to fill the page. <laughs> He's like, you could easily be replaced with a mannequin with a trash bag over it and just a soundboard with four buttons. He's like, these are the only four things that you say. Thanks. And yeah, and and he's like, that's it. And he's like, you have no contribution whatsoever to the to the show. Right. And I was like, holy shit, that, that's I don't watch the show except when I'm making fun of it in yeah. videos. But it, it seemed pretty dead on accurate. And and Fresh was just like, you know, he didn't know what to say. But it's it's essentially true. I mean, Myron just basically acts like a fake tough guy and kicks the girls off. Fresh just sits there and, and kind of mumbles and says nonsense. And that's that's yeah, the whole I think, show. But I think so. my, I think there might be a, a deeper motivation to doing all of that than than meets the eye, um, because it's so fucking ridiculous that I don't know, man. I, I don't know because it's it's it almost it looks so fake. It almost looks so fake and so intentional and so staged because you couldn't, you know. I mean, I guess there is, you know, there's a there's a problem where. You know, I've I've had friends of mine say, "Oh, well, you know, I got uh, he he gave me some like it, it, he said something, some kind of advice that he learned from fresh fresh and fit." And I'm like, "Wait a minute, you're actually taking that shit seriously? Like, so that's a problem, you know." A lot gonna, of guys are. You're gonna hear something. A lot of guys look up to him. Yeah, and then go apply it to real life, and you know that's the the problem with this red pill thing is. I think it's going to end up fucking up a lot of people's lives. It already has. It's going to make yeah. people, um, you know, really, you know, they're going to harbor resentment for women. Um, and, yep. and really, you know, I I think, you know, a really fulfilling part of life is like having like a family and, and yeah. like a marriage and shit. Like I look at my sisters and they, they have great lives. And yep. if, if you're if you're inundated in all this uh, toxic bullshit, then you're yep. going to completely avoid that. And then you're going to yeah. be, you know, 52 years old, you know, sitting at your computer, hating women and playing video games. You're going to be like, what the fuck yeah. happened? To my life? No, I talk to guys every week that that went down those rabbit holes and that yeah. watch those channels. And they're like, I like don't want anything to do with women. I hate all women. I, I think all women are terrible. And it's like, dude, I'm like, I've dated a lot of girls like my clients have dated a lot of girl, girls can be awesome. Girls can add a lot of fulfillment to your life. If you if you think about it, like if a guy had like a really good job, good physique, cool hobbies, all this shit, but he's missing like a good chick by his side, then he's usually right. not fulfilled. He's usually not happy. Oh, he usually feels but like shit. Yeah. If he has a good chick and everything else falls apart, he still can be fulfilled 
and content and happy, right? And he can still feel like he's complete. And he can he can pick up the pieces and, and make the other things get get good again later. But the chick factor like makes or breaks if a guy is typically happy. So so that's why I fight against these various movements is not only are they incorrect and objectively false, but they steer guys down the wrong path away from girls or, or actively not away from we, Yeah. Yep. And there's like the MGTOW movement too that says men going their own way where they've just given up on dating completely. Because they yeah, think well, women are all gonna they're... screw them over, right? But you know, you're a you're a man. I mean, you're you know, you're never gonna be a father. You're never gonna like like that's just. I just I can't imagine. Well, maybe for some men, it's probably not you know for them. But you know, I couldn't imagine you know having a fulfilling life without without doing that. It's like, what are you gonna what are you gonna do your whole life? What are you gonna make money and like try to buy a Ferrari and then what? You look like a fucking idiot. You're gonna be like one of these. <laughs> you know these these assholes with their Oakleys driving a an Aventador down the street and thinking they're all fucking cool and yeah. you know they have no friends they have no women it's just you know, it's just <laughs> it's just like it's just a weird I think but it's it's just like it's literally the other side of the spectrum of feminism you know yep I almost shouldn't even say like to- that, toxic maybe. masculinity and it's you had Andrew Tate same coin yeah you had Andrew Tate pushing a lot of that. You know, he he had like 13 billion views on TikTok, I think, right? 13 wow. billion. And, and he was just pushing yeah. this whole thing that, oh, you have to drive a Bugatti and, and smoke cigars and fly around in private jets. And it's just this unrealistic expectation of what a man should try to achieve, right? And, and he's not good with chicks. And he's not mm-hmm. getting lots of chicks, right? Like, like I've, I've done lots of videos on that as well. He In his webcam business, he was mostly just sleeping with his employees, Right. Like he doesn't have a game, but he's putting out this unrealistic expectation where all these guys are like, oh, I need to get a Bugatti and and, and be cool. Yeah. There's all this. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that, too. Um, What was I going to say? But the end result is is you had guys not wanting to be taught by females in classrooms all around the world and in countries all around the world. They're mm-hmm. saying, oh, Andrew Tate says women belong in the kitchen making sandwiches. And, and that's where this stuff, you know, really causes a lot of damage to society. Because it's like setting us back like a whole bunch of decades where you have all these impressionable young men that are now being, you know, trained to be misogynistic, right? And and think that women are all below them. And that like like Fresh and Fit constantly say, like women's only value is to like cook and clean, right? And, and please the man. That they literally They literally say that on their show all the time. Yeah, and it, and it attracts um, it attracts men who don't want to take responsibility for things that they did poorly in life. That's all it is. Yeah, so it's, it's, oh, yeah, it's not my fault because you know women are all fucked up. So it wasn't my fault. Yes, it was. It was, and that's dude. That's the literal opposite of masculinity: is men shifting the blame onto women instead of taking responsibility for it. Yep, it's turning men into pussies. Yeah. yeah. And they're and a lot of these movements too, like they allow the guy to be a victim. Like the black pill, the guy can just blame his looks and say, Well, I don't look like a model, therefore I'm never gonna get any hot girls. Right. A lot of guys think that. They think if you don't look like a model, then you have no chance in dating. That's the Dude, black pill stuff. I am a model and I've been rejected by women. I mm-hmm. literally am a model. It's got nothing yep. to do with it. And I'll tell you, honestly, you know, um, you know, being too too much of a dick really didn't pan out for even with my looks you know what i mean um yep. yeah that black pill shit imagine you know i feel bad for them like what does every day look like if you're black pill you wake up they're very depressed you, they're very very yeah. depressed because they they think that just because their face isn't symmetrical or their jawline isn't defined enough that they can never date and they're told that all over Dude, the place there are so very, many, very black book creators. here's the thing you know my girlfriend was telling me about this there's something called medium ugly and a lot of women kind of like medium ugly because it lowers the chance of them getting cheated on. So like <laughs> they they think, I'm not saying that's correct, but you do not have to be extremely handsome to get an attractive woman because yeah, they respond to behavior. There are an enormous amount of good-looking women. There aren't an enormous amount of good-looking men. It's it's probably kind of rare, honestly. And they yeah. don't, and what these black pill men think that women place the same emphasis on face as men do because they're they fucking don't. stupid. No, they yeah. don't at all. 
don't give yeah. a shit. And that, and that, and that's subjectively the case, right? Like if you, if you, if anybody studies evolutionary biology, like men are primarily attracted to looks, but women are attracted to survival and replication value. So it's like how the guy carries himself, the confidence he portrays, how comfortable he is in his own skin. Safety that's the kind of thing that's attractive to chicks. So if you go outside and look around, like you'll see average guys all the time with really hot chicks. And it's not yes. always a sugar baby situation. It's just that that guy's carrying himself like the man and girls respond positively to and that. And their first response is, oh, he must have money. No. Yeah. Like, so like if we look at like, if we see like a beautiful woman with a great body and we go, oh, wow, just based off what we look, they don't even need to talk. Yep. I think women have the same, that same emotional response to when they see a man who's just walking like he knows what the fuck he's doing. And it's yep. probably the same. And they're not looking at his face. They're like, oh, they're, they're not looking at his face. They're looking at the whole, the whole way he presents himself. And this is something that men can work on and fix. Yep. This whole red pill fucking bullshit or the soy boy thing is going to send him in the opposite directions. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so, uh, you know, like it's not that looks doesn't matter, but it's not going to usually be a deal breaker unless the guy's like obese or, you know, if the guy's like rail thin, that could work against him potentially. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so I tell guys like maximize your physique, maximize your sexual market value, and then work on your game, work on the strategy and tactics. Cause that's, that's a big part of the equation is how you text, how you run a date how you walk up to a stranger in public, how you build your online profile. Those are the things that, that make the most difference in the dating equation. Yeah. I mean, you I would, like guys, you can't be 300 pounds, 250 pounds fat and, and expect yep. like attractive because it's not that, I mean, partially it is probably because it's kind of, it grosses them out. I'm sure. But a lot of it is too. A lot of it is they, they don't trust you to be able to have discipline. If you don't have enough yeah. discipline to take care of your fucking body, how are you going to have enough discipline to take care of them, children, family, marriage, house, whatever? They just, it's an yep. automatic, okay, well, this guy has absolutely no discipline or ambition at all. I think that's yep. mostly what it signals to women. It's not so much the physical thing. Like we see a fat woman and we go, ew, like grossed out <laughs> visually. I think they're grossed yeah. out emotionally by fat men. Yeah. So that's why you want to you want to get in shape. You just want to portray responsibility and leadership and ambition. Do you need to go to bars and clubs to be successful in dating? I don't like the bar club scene. I'd rather get my eight hours of sleep. Yeah, I, I mean. um, No, no, you don't. Right. So so as long as the guys are getting I tell my clients to get at least 10 new phone numbers a week, which might sound like a lot, but at a high level, right? Like at, like at my level, I'm closing about 10 percent of my phone numbers. So when I hit a thousand girls in December 2018, I had about 10,000 phone numbers in my phone. <laughs> now I have over 20,000 phone numbers in the phone and it's dropped a little below 10%. Now I'm at 1,769 girls. So it's like eight, eight something and a half percent. But I've talked to other top guys and they're closing roughly around 10%. So for every 10 phone numbers, you're going to sleep with one girl at a high level. So I tell guys to be getting 10 to 20 phone numbers a week. That can come from online. It can come from bars and clubs. It can come from daytime environments i tell guys as a general rule of thumb try to go out friday saturday if you can because you can typically get 10 to 20 phone numbers just in one night out if you're continuously going from girl to girl um run a tinder bumble and hinge and then use the online apps like 30 minutes a day collectively but if you don't like going to bars and clubs then you just have to use online more and talk to girls more during the day it's a, it doesn't matter what the lead source is as long as you're getting at least 10 to 20 phone numbers a week and you can make multiple tinder profiles as well like i have um, some clients running like three, four Tinder profiles. And some guys think like, why can't I just use my one prof profile more? They limit how many matches any particular profile gets. So I tell guys to think of it as if you were like combining all the matches of you and like three of your friends, right? By making multiple profiles with different first pictures, you can draw in phone numbers from all these different profiles. So you can just double down on, on the online in order to make up for the fact that you don't go to bars and clubs. Now, where do you think... You know, if you were to do the online thing, which um, which app do you think has the the highest quality women? I think Tinder, uh, Tinder is like Planet Fitness. It's got this negative connotation, yeah. like it's all nasty hoes. I mean, like which uh, <laughs> which it probably I mean, for my the hottest girls years ago, Tinder was pretty. I don't I, I mean, never the, the hottest girls, the hottest girls for online are on the sugar daddy sites. 
right? Like seeking arrangement. And there's a specific method to like screen out the gold diggers and the girls that that want money on those sites that I, that I use. So, but that's where the hottest girls are online by far, just because. What about like the best quality women, like the ones who not overall, necessarily the hottest, but just you know, like your girl, like like normal. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I actually met my chick on on Tinder before I came to Brazil. I I set my Tinder to to the city in Brazil, and and I was swiping in New York. And we matched and started talking before I even arrived in Brazil. And then we met up like the second day that mm -hmm. I was here. But, you know, like I think Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, like those are the those are kind of the major three. Um, Bumble is a little bit more like dating and, and non hookup oriented, I would say, than, than Tinder is. But right. you can find like all types of girls on, on all three of those between Tinder, Bumble and Hinge. So. Yeah. You know, like my chick was on Tinder, but but she doesn't sleep with guys on the first date. And she said that she only sees a guy for a second date like 5% of the time. So, you know, you, there's like a little room for error. Yeah, I mean, it, you got to look at dates. You know, like, you know, a lot of women are kind of interviewing you. Like, I think a lot I'll, of women go, go on to dates without, without the intention of, of really anything. They're just going to be like, yeah, let's see what he's about. Mm, just kind of feel him out. Men go on dates like trying to get the woman because they've already kind of made up their mind women don't I'll show a picture this this is the the main chick that i date in brazil so she's like in good shape she's an engine engineer let me show a different picture actually um we have a similar sense of humor we're, we're both like hyper analytical um you know, you know everybody has different things they're looking for i like you know fake tits flat stomach pretty face nice ass right physically um yeah i don't i don't think you're too far off from what most people are looking looking for <laughs> yeah so that's that's like her body type but she's also like smart and funny and cool and all that stuff so like whatever people are looking for i i tell guys don't don't settle neither physically nor what you're looking for internally in the girl right if your game yeah, don't don't strategy settle, improves don't. you'll be able to get access to better and better girls over time like a lot of times like a client will come on the program and he's like just so you know i only want to bang nines and tens and I'm like, cool. You know, everybody does. Have you banged a nine or ten before? No. Have you banged an eight before? No. Have you banged a seven before? Um, almost. And so, like, all right, no problem. But we're gonna have to get you good with sevens in general, so that you can then move up in quality. That's usually how it works. Is like, the guy gets good with a certain quality level, and then he goes outside of his comfort zone. He usually fucks it up because he's intimidated and because he's making too many mistakes, and and so he he blows his chances. And then he acclimates and, and actually like levels up his like coolness and how he carry, carries himself and his confidence and, and makes less mistakes. And then he all of a sudden he can regularly get eights. He can regularly get nines. And then beyond that, right now he has access to the best girls. And, and I think that's like really the, where everybody should be trying to, to get to is where they can regularly attract girls above a nine in looks that are also really cool chicks internally as well. Mm -hmm. Right, because looks is just one is one component. Like I always yes, want yes. my my number one girl like has to be really hot, but she also has to be bisexual and and down for threesome stuff. She has to be you know like cool and and funny and and come from a good family, have a good heart. Like, I've never caught my chick lying to me ever. Like you have to be able to trust them, that kind of thing. Um, so that's why it's 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 funny when you see these other you know quote unquote dating coaches that are with a girl. It's like a three or a two out of 10 right and then you see the girl disrespects them publicly as well and and you know it's like it's just like an embarrassment for them Dude, yeah that's the one thing i i notice my god you know people i'm close friends with they're they're women just publicly disrespecting them and i'm just like yeah you're out of your fucking mind and that's dude and that's settling but a lot of these guys i think they kind of settle because they might be under the impression that a, a beautiful, you know, high quality girl is rare, but I mean, you found it's actually not rare, right? It's, it's yeah. The problem is they just don't have access to those girls. They just don't have access. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they don't know how to build their online profile right. They don't know how to walk up to girls properly and, and speak to them in public properly. And mm -hmm. then everything that comes after, they don't know how to text them properly. They don't know how to run the date properly. They don't know how to confirm the date. There's like so many little things that go into it. It's not that it's complicated. It's just that guys are making missteps everywhere, which cause like most of the girls to fall off and not materialize into a hookup or a, or a longer term thing. 
So like even confirming the dates, like I have sequences that I have the clients send the night before in the morning of that minimizes the chances that she'll flake, right? Or, or if she has any kind of objection to meeting up or any kind of objection to going home with the guy from the date, they need to know how to respond to those things. Otherwise, you know, that's going to trip them up. Okay. So I basically give them all the best moves in advance so that there's no guesswork or, or curveballs that, that hit them out of the blue. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, shit. Um, yeah. I mean, if you guys, if you guys need help with this kind of stuff, I mean, John Anthony, you, but Jesus, like, how many people have you coached at this point? Would you say? Um, we've estimated like, I mean, people that have, have bought the, the products and stuff like that, like it's, it's over like 10,000. Um, but for like live, live events like we, we typically do like three guys per program just so it doesn't become unmanageable um mm -hmm. but the main thing that i run is a the eight week program that's like a mentorship where i personally coach them over the course of eight weeks so they they have the optimized content training like for how to do the cold approach how to set up their online profile what the tinder and texting scripts are how to run and close dates and how to keep the ones they want but then they come to the calls and they're like hey this happened on a date what do i do this happened at a bar or club what do I do? This happened over text. What do I do? And I've seen and done all the different situations time and time and time again. So I know the optimal fixes, just like guys come to you with the fitness problems on the calls and you know, the optimal move to make the optimal adjustment. So we just refine over the course of that eight weeks. And then they, they typically get their dream girlfriend or build up their dream rotation of regulars within that first month. And, and then we just keep refining and, and improving their, their skills further and further. But if anybody wants to, uh, train with me. We have the link in the description, or you can go to platinumdatingsystem.com uh, to find yeah, out more details. If you're, um, you know, if you're single, you're you're having a dry spell, or you feel like you're settling. I mean, you guys, you got one life. You know, give it a shot. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? I mean, if you're not, just, just like how you fix the problem, I do the same thing here. It's like, yeah, I fix, I make it so they can get the best girls very consistently and repeat that their whole life. And then they don't need my help or anybody's help in this area ever again. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of, of coaching anyways. That's why I respect what, what you do is because you actually fix the problem. There's a lot of people that just put guys on a hamster wheel and they're like, okay, what's the next solution I can sell them in quotes. And that goes on for years and years and years. And the guy doesn't get the girls he wants. He doesn't get the physique he wants. And he's just paying some asshole. That's just, you know, keeping them on a, on a hamster wheel, which is, that's unfortunately how a lot of both of our industries are. Yeah. And, it, and the thing is like, you know, we, we got one, sh we got one shot at life. We got one life. You might yep. as well level up your physique, your dating, everything. You might as well, like, why wouldn't you, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. of walking around pissed off at the world, miserable, <laughs> being a victim. Oh, my parents did this to me and my ex did this to me. And that's why my life fucking sucks. Like, no, guys, grab your life by the fucking balls. Do something about it. Like if your dating sucks, if you're dating some rotten brat who just treats you like shit all the time, get rid of her and learn yep. how to date higher quality women. You got someone who's going to teach you how to do it. Just fucking do it. What do we got to lose? I don't get it. Eight weeks. I mean, Christ. You know? well, a lot of guys are skeptical. They're like, well, how, how can this work so quickly or how can this work so effectively? Or some guys have tried with other dating coaches that scammed them. And then so they're skeptical. But well, that's why we made a, as you know, we, we've made a proof page. There's over 1,250 testimonials on there now. Mm -hmm. So anybody that goes to that page, they just get hit right in the face with like result after result after result. And there's videos of guys telling their stories. There's written testimonials, but we just, we put every single testimonial that we receive onto that page. And before someone's considering signing up with me, I say, look, we have the best results in the industry objectively. You don't have to just take my word for it. Right. We, and that, and that's what you're doing now too, is collecting all the yep, testimonials yep, right. Tons of and you can't disagree with that. I mean, people can say, Oh, maybe those are fake. But I, if anybody says that, I'm like, Hey, I can put you in contact with any one of these clients. They'd be happy to speak to you. Cause they, that's the, that's the truth. I could do. I've got a lot of people in my coaching that came from your program and they're crushing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, know, you well. hear firsthand and, and I hear firsthand how, how guys are leveling up their physiques very quickly oh. on your stuff. So, so we, we both know through all the empirical data, that our stuff works better than anything else out there. It does. I mean, Hey, I mean, you could, you could sit there and walk around pissed off, man at the world the rest of your life. Or you could fucking do something about it. I mean, we're, you know, we're not going to hold their hand. We can show them, but yeah. you know, well, the thing, the thing is, is a lot of people are lazy too. Right. And it's not that lazy, these things yeah, take scared. like a ton of work. 
but they have to do more than nothing, right? They're going to have to go walk up to strangers, which might be uncomfortable, or they have to at least like be swiping on Tinder and following up with the conversations. And so we make it as easy and painless as possible, right? Same with the lifting thing. You, you tell guys they can achieve their dream physique by just working out twice a week for 45 minutes. Yeah. Right. They don't have to be in the gym multiple hours a day, six, seven days a week. And they don't have to like the dating stuff becomes relatively effortless as well. They just have to know how to do it properly. Mm -hmm. I look at, you know, like, like uh, getting a good physique or getting better at dating. These are just kind of like skill games where you need to know the proper information that's going to work the quickest and most effective and then just execute it. And the problem is, is there's so much misinformation out there that guys have tried various workout plans or they've tried various dating strategies and they've seen no, no result. And so a lot of times they lose faith in teachers in general. They're like, oh, well, everybody must be, be scamming or trying to fuck me over. But I actively speak out like on my channel. I speak out against a lot of the coaches in the industry and say, look, this is bullshit. Look, th this guy has an ugly, ugly wife, right? And people say, oh, that, that's like an asshole thing to say. But maybe that would be true. And let, but since he's calling himself a world-class dating coach, the fact that his girlfriend's like a fat too is incredibly relevant and, and needs to be shown to the, to the people that are following him. Yeah, it would be like, like a homeless guy giving financial advice, or it'd be yeah, like exactly, you know, a or, or a fat, fat personal fat trainer dork. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's the thing about fitness. Some of the smartest people I know about fitness are not are not bodybuilders. They're like scientists. You know, it's a different, it's a different yeah. ball game. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's when different. it comes to yeah. your when it comes to your thing, I mean, I mean, in order to you'd have to know what you're doing, and if your results are not reflecting that, then it's obvious. You yeah, and, and people try to people try to explain it away. Oh, well, that guy has a super ugly wife or girlfriend, but her personality must be a 10. And it's like, oh, come well. on. There, there, <laughs> there's, there's lots of pretty girls with 10 personalities, too. Exactly. Yeah. But they what? say that there isn't. And the Red Pope oh, just say okay. that all the hot girls. Yeah, have, what a convenient excuse. What a convenient yeah, excuse. That's, that's what I always say. <laughs> it's not that they can't get those girls, they don't want those girls, is what they say. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's that. They yeah, don't that's want the they, thing they, too. Myron and Fresh literally make videos all the time. We don't want nines and tens because what they claim is those girls have nothing to offer besides their looks and they have no hobbies and, and but it's all blanket stereotypes that are not the case. I've dated hot no. girls all around the world. There's nothing that precludes a girl from having things going on or, or having a good personality just because she's hot. My girl's a 10 and she's got a wonderful personality and she's yeah. got a million things to offer. So yep. anecdotally, it's fucking untrue. That's I why I try to tell guys, like, you, don't, you don't have to buy into this that that only ugly girls are worth dating or only ugly girls oh, have good personalities. Right. It's just bullshit. No. It's absolute fucking bullshit. And you and I, you know, both can say from experience that it's bullshit. So, guys, yeah. if you want to level up, if you want to level up your life, level up your dating, level up your fitness. John's got it. I put John's link in the description. You book, call them, talk about it. And the way I see it is, why not? Give it a shot. Give it a shot, man. You'll have fun doing it. You'll learn, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, you're getting out there talking to people. That's going to help you with, uh, you know, you got to get comfortable talking to strangers too. I mean, that's one thing I learned yeah. how to do and it's helped me excel in many other avenues of life. Just, so even the experience of going through this is just super beneficial. Even if your goal is not to get a million women, you know? Yep. So. Yeah. And you've seen like when we, when we met in person a few years ago, like you saw me, bring some of the the hot girls around right like the blonde at the end yeah that was kind of funny because we were sitting at that uh hotel bar dog is barking um we were sitting at that hotel bar i'm like oh it's a john anthony guy and there goes that john anthony guy <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> you're sitting with her for probably 10 minutes and then you left and i was like oh it's interesting so i yeah i did i mean i hadn't even met you at that point um but yeah i saw you do it kind of i just wanted to see i was like let's see if this guy's full of shit <laughs> i was like yeah no oh, I, I, there if, people, goes. if people can't you know make stuff happen on the spot and and you know they're not legitimate there, there's reports all over the the community going back over 10 years of guys seeing me pull hot girls from the clubs all the time so that's the thing is most of the guys on youtube have like zero pictures with girls zero testimonials there, there's something called infield footage in in my sphere where they're where they're doing like you know, hidden camera recording of a public pickup where, where you see where you have like a microphone on. It's not illegal, right? Because it's 
it's in public. Um, you can't film like in the apartment or, or in private locations, but I can show myself like walking up to strangers over and over and over and taking them home. And that's a good teaching vehicle. As I show in the, in the courses, here's exactly what you do and say from start to finish in order to get the girl to come home with you. Here's the types of things that happen. Here's how you deal with them. Um, and it's going to be cool too, where you and I are going to be, uh, I live in Brazil, but I'm going to be in the States and we're going to, you're going to put me through a whole, uh, hit workout yep. that we're going to film and, and post on your channel. Gonna yeah, it's gonna be nice like a, it's gonna be like infield with training. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let me show you what it's like. But, but yeah, we're gonna. It'll probably be the hardest workout of my life because I know that you said that. Yes. Like when you put Elliot Hulse and some other guys through the workouts, they said that was like the hardest training they've ever yep. done because you're going to like pure absolute failure. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, and, and you guys can see that um, when it's posted. I'll be I'll be I'm six foot four, uh, like two fifteen pounds right now, um, which is kind of where I want to. I want to stay. That's kind of like my target range, but um, yeah, that'll be awesome to go through a whole workout from start to finish. Yeah, man. I want you, yeah. Once, once I put you through, to. you know, I've, you know, I've explained training to failure and stuff like that, but I was never able to, you know, put you through a workout. I think yep. you got another five pounds of muscle left to go once. Uh, yeah. Once I teach you how to do it, you know, be, being six foot four, a giant frame, it is extremely rare. To be six foot four and extremely muscular, those guys usually fucking end up in the NFL for that reason. Um, but I yep. still think you got another five pounds to go once I show you. Yeah, because I'm I'm lifting heavy. Like, like I see myself out lifting a lot of guys that are shorter than me at the gym, but their but their arms and their legs are just a lot wider because they're a lot. It's a lot shorter of a muscle. Less I never really understood that until yep. a trainer explained that to me. He's like, dude, he's like your arm, like my arm length. You know, from here to here is way different than a shorter guy's length. So, so you 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 have to, like you said, it's, it, you it takes much a while, more like, to tissue to get yeah. that. That's why a lot of pro bodybuilders are five seven, five six. Yep. Um, Franco Colombo was five foot five because I mean, it's it's your muscles will look bigger because they you don't need as much tissue because the limb is not as long. Yep. So, in order to get you, you're going to need, you know, Jesus, fifty percent more muscle tissue to get that. Yeah. Same. Fact on yeah, it's the same the it's the same with my legs like like i'm i'm leg pressing like the 45 degree leg press i'm doing over 700 pounds now i'm doing like four sets of 10 reps but my legs aren't like these tree trunk legs because the you know the quad is like this elongated yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i mean if you're you know if, if you've got a a leg that's you know four or five inches longer than the average individual just think of how much more tissue has to go that's like another it's like another limb. <laughs> it's like, yep. So, yeah, yeah. And I have a fast metabolism. So, so even to put on weight, I like I was like maybe um, like 160, 165 wow. pounds back in college at the same height. Right. That's so, I was always like notoriously rail thin, and then I got really serious about lifting um, like four years ago. You know, I was I was doing it on and off, but I was still drinking beyond like past four years ago so that was really like hindering my progress and consistency but once i quit drinking uh four and a half years ago i got a trainer and started really hitting it consistently and i've stayed consistent the past four years now mm -hmm. and your stuff helped helped a lot as well because i think like what probably the most important thing i've ever heard you say is that like once once the the lift gets uncomfortable or or you're starting to feel like that burn that's usually where a lot of people stop and that's where the progress is coming yes so People need to like like you told me like keep keep pushing through the the rep until you can't move the weight for like three to five seconds, mm -hmm. and that's when you know the muscle's fully gassed. And I think that's super super valuable. And when I've had trainers with me in person, they push you on that on those extra last reps, and that's really where a lot of the progress comes yep. because people typically want to give up or stop at that point because that's where it gets uncomfortable. And that's what I teach you my coaching. I teach you how to get past that. Um, without me there, which is something that people can take with them, you know, for, for yep. life. So, yeah, that's what we do. We're trying to, you know, get people to learn these skills. So, I mean, you know, you can't unlearn a skill. When you learn a skill, it's there forever. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to teach these skills so people can take them with them forever and just fucking have a better life, man. It's all it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. And imagine, guys, like imagine what would it be like if you had the good physique and the good dating skills you're like a double threat 
right? Yeah, now we just got to make a little bit trade. of money so you drive a Porsche, and then you're going to be crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear, some of the best runs I had in the game were like many years back when I was like flat broke because you just have more free time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, the chick, yeah, the I mean, don't I never had a problem when I was flat broke either, and um, now I'm far from it. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it's not like you go out dating women and buying them fucking Louis Vuitton bags and shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and they don't, and they don't know how much money you have. That's the thing is yeah. like, like guys think like, oh, I have to be making a ton of money. They don't know how much money you're making, and, and most of them don't care. You shouldn't be leading can... with money either. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're leading with money, you're going to end up with a girl that only likes money. And if for some reason you don't have it, well, adios. You know, that's yeah. what I, when I, when I, you know, I would never disclose my financial status to women until like I was seriously dating them. You know what I mean? I think yep. that's a good approach. Yeah. No, I had a client that was a, a literal billionaire. He was an owner of a hedge fund and he wanted to pay me like 10 K a month just to get him like w one hot date a week. And I was like, all right, I can do that for you, but I'm going to need to train you how to act on the date and how to carry yourself because he wasn't getting laid for like years. And he's like, really? no, no, I'll just, he's like, I'll just take her to a nice restaurant and pick her up oh, in the yeah. Ferrari and show mm -hmm. her the houses. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're going to get the wrong types of girls that are, that are going to be going to ruin like, your like, fucking life too. Right. Those kind yeah. of girls, they break them over the coals. Yeah. Jeez, I was like, yeah. you can't, you can't lead with that. You can't you just be flexing that to try to win the girls over. They have to be attracted to you for you. I had a different guy that was worth over a hundred million. He's like, I can buy any car, any plane, like go anywhere, do anything I want at any time. He's like, the one thing that I can't get with money is, is a full, full package girls, like genuine affection where she likes me beyond the money. Uh -huh. and, and I was, he's like, I would trade away all the money I have to have the skills you have. And, and that shows the the value to a lot of people of, actually learning how to do the dating process correctly because money isn't going to solve it you know getting a lot of cool hobbies even getting in super good shape isn't going to ultimately solve it it's going to give you some advantages but the guy still will need to learn how to conduct himself and, and how to run a date and text and all those different things mm -hmm. yeah so that's how valuable this, this this stuff is to a fulfilling life this guy's worth a hundred million dollars and he'd get rid of it just to be able to have a you know a good person a good relationship that's man that's yeah. not and, and a lot of people would be chasing that that hundred million their whole life and then feel empty and be like what the fuck happened well you're chasing the wrong thing man yeah and they've done studies with happiness in in relation to excuse me in relation to money and they've found that once your basic needs are met there's like very big drop off there's like diminishing returns and and Huge how diminishing. acquiring more money doesn't really make people that much happier it can buy them more freedom and and you know allow them more flexibility and take some stress away but it, it's not going to ultimately like get you that awesome girl that you want or right. you know make you like super super fulfilled right so you still have to work on these other areas yeah like cars and mansions they're not going to be a feel fulfilled like you know i mean uh you know, as long as you have the ability to like, hey, if I feel like steak tonight to go buy a fucking steak, you're probably you're probably going to be you're probably going to be happy. But, you know, buying all yeah. this excessive shit, I think that's just like consumerism that's drained into us from an early age just so we uh, go in a lot of debt and make companies a lot of money. But yeah. I think, you know, you know, having, you know, good friends, good family, good women by your side, I think. You know that that looks like happiness to me, and I've seen it happen with with a lot of other people. And they may may yeah. not be millionaires, but they they absolutely love their lives, and I think that's what men should be going after. Yep, yeah, and it's just misinformation too that that yep. money is suddenly gonna gonna get you your dream girl or anything like that. That's that's what these channels push, but it's but it's not the case. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, that's why I fight against those things because it, it's just it's just sending the wrong message to guys. A lot of them tell tell guys just to forget about dating and go make a bunch of money first, and then the girl yeah. will come. I get clients all the time that are really rich, and they're like, "I made the money thinking it would get me the girls, and I'm still without girls now." And I'm like, "All right, well, let's train you how to do this properly." Yeah, you can you know? do both. You know, I mean, you know, ignoring ignoring everything in the world and focusing on money. I don't think that's gonna make you very happy. You can do both. I think yeah. you gotta balance both. You know, but humans are so yeah. fucking extreme. You have to just. Put all your eggs into one basket at a time. You can't just kind of spread them out. Like you, you can spread them out. You probably should spread them out. Yeah. Go bash it insane on one thing for your entire life. Um, that's something I'm learning as I mature. You know, when I was younger, I would just 
laser focus one thing at a time, but you probably know too. I mean, you know, you got to kind of spread it out. And um, yep. yeah, so guys, go ahead, you know, click the link in the in his in my description here. Um, you know, if you want to improve this this aspect of your life and you know live a more fulfilling life, hopefully meet somebody you know that you really care about. And you know, I mean, this is you've got to have some kind of adequate approach to do it. If if you're not doing very well right now, well, John can help you. And um, if you need help getting in shape, I can help you. So that's it. That's John Anthony, John Anthony Lifestyle, PlatinumDatingSystem.com. Really good friend of mine. Talk to him almost every day. I've known him for three years. I trust him. I think he's a very genuine, cool dude. And I think you guys should try Thanks. shit. Thanks. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I really see us as like being very similar in the fact that like you're actually fixing people's fitness problems. I'm actually fixing people's dating problems. Mm -hmm. And we can't say that for most of the rest of the quote unquote right. coaches in our spaces. Yeah. Our goal is to kind of give you the solution, give you the fix and send you on your way. And, yeah. uh, you know, in, in my coaching, eventually people, you know, I have an unlimited coaching program where I coach them for as long as they need it until they get where they need to be. And then they kind of fizzle off and drift out on their own. They don't need me ever again. Yep. And that's what yeah. I like. It was so fulfilling about it. That Yeah. And, and if we didn't fix the problem, we didn't do our job. Right. Whereas right. a lot of the rest of the coaches in both of our spaces look at it as how can I like maximum extract maximum money over as much time as possible again. from this person. That's that's yeah. traditional so, marketing. It's it's yeah. provide a solution to a problem, create a new problem, provide a solution yeah. to that over and over and over and over and over again. And I, I, I think that's predatory and, and it's fucked up and it's wasting the guy's time and, and his money and and, and all very common to get to his goal. Yeah. You know, like there, there was a company in my space called Real Social Dynamics that led the, the dating space for like over 10 years and they have over 70 products. And I always make the point to people, Sad. if any of these worked, why would they need all these other, why do you, why does any company need to sell 70 products? Right. And I've routinely gotten people that have gone through the ringer with that company and, and wasted lots of years of their life, lot, lots of money. And they're still nowhere near their goal at all. A lot of them have gone backwards because a lot of the solutions have made them say and do weird stuff that keeps them stuck. And I think these companies do that on purpose too. They, they want to keep the person stuck with the problem so that they're always dependent on the coach to quote unquote help them. Mm -hmm. And and they even convince the, the clients that they don't need to worry about getting girls anymore. They shouldn't care about you know if they're actually getting girls from this quote unquote training. They say, just trust the process. And, and it'll work out eventually. And so it, it's kind of like a carrot's being dangled. And the guy is just chasing this carrot for, for five, 10, even, even more years. And the company knows that they're not going to give them the carrot, but the guy keeps spending money and, and wasting time the whole, the whole way along. So that's why I speak out against that stuff because we have real solutions, number one. So it's like a disrespect to the craft that people are peddling snake oil. But number two, it's it's predatory and, and it's it's wasting guys' money and time and, and causing more suffering and pain, you know, just for the own for the company's benefit, which is which is really fucked. Yeah, hope hope is not a good strategy. I forget what the exact quote. <laughs> hope is not a good strategy, guys. You need something systemized. So well, if, if people aren't seeing results, like like our stuff delivers results very fast, right? Like. <laughs> On the second week, most guys have their calendars packed full of dates and they have no room to schedule new dates. With your training after three months, guys are seeing noticeable changes. I've right? had guys gain five, five pounds, two kilos in fucking four weeks. That's yeah. eight workouts. Why? So there, there's, there's tangible results. Work. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even expect the results to be that good. But then I kept seeing time after time, like people would be like, oh, I stepped on the scale and I'm six pounds. Isn't, isn't that such a good feeling too? Like, like when yeah, I first right. built my product, I was like, I know that this stuff works and, and hopefully I explained it in a way that's going to work for other people. And then I start getting like one of the first reports I got, this dude was like, um, I was a 19 year old virgin in London. I applied your product and I slept with 47 girls in six months. And he's like, it could have been way higher. I didn't have much time to do this stuff because I was working a lot. And I was like, holy shit, that's such a, such a good feeling to see like random strangers just leveling up massively even guys I didn't work with directly, right? Just from the, the digital product itself. Mm -hmm. And then w once you start working with them and you're clearing the, the problems, it, it works even more effectively and, and quicker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But to hear like, hey, like, 
you know, I was, I, I tried all these things for five years, for 10 years, and then they come on my program and, and they're just executing and, and cleaning up. And it's like that time and time again. But you look around, who else is providing that? Who else has a service like that? I don't know of anybody that's that's getting, uh, yeah. it looks like his battery died there. Hold on, let me switch it. I, I don't know of anybody that's that's getting uh, guys extremely good with chicks really quick in my space. Nobody else is doing that. Yeah, and I had one um one of my one of my clients actually um was a, a virgin at 27 years old and he lost his virginity the first week on my program. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's yeah, and um yeah now he's now he's jacked and ripped six pack. And um, just crushing it. So yeah, guys, fucking click that link in the description. Follow, follow John's um, John Anthony the Lifestyle YouTube, and um, you do a lot of free stuff too, a lot of free content too, right? Yeah, I have like over two thousand videos where where I give away a lot of free stuff. But the, but the paid programs go far beyond uh, what I what I give away for free. But but there's lots of people that get really good just for my free stuff too. Um, that's that's the problem is like when we talk about these things we're actually giving solutions and, and speaking about things that lead to results on like every piece of advice we give so mm -hmm. just by making free content guys are gonna be able to level up massively as, as well yeah and we also have logic and reasoning and evidence behind our recommendations we just we don't say shit, yep. oh like, like just try this why it's not just, just a hate that shit that's youtube in a nutshell yeah. like, oh, <laughs> drink apple cider vinegar every morning why i don't know it's good for you Shut the fuck up. Like, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, guys. So, yeah. yeah, click the link in the description. Follow his page. Um, and if you haven't tried, you know, if you haven't tried my Golden Era system, you know, that's one of the the do-it-yourself programs, too. And if you want me to coach you, you know, you know the, you know the deal. All right, guys. Thanks, cool. Sean, for coming on, explaining your yeah, stuff. Yeah, thanks. I'll, I'll, see you, uh, I'll see you next week in person. We go through the whole the Yeah, whole we're going to do – yep, I'm going to take John through a workout. I'll probably do the workout with you, actually. I'll take you through and then do it myself um, so you can see uh, me and John go through high-intensity training and um, see how freaking awesome it is. Awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for, uh, for sticking around, guys. And like Chase said, uh, we have the link in the description to get on a, a free call to talk about training with me, or you can go to platinumdatingsystem.com and then John Anthony Lifestyle on YouTube. Yep, yep. All right, guys, we'll see you, uh, see you on the next live stream. Next live stream we'll do will be strictly fitness. If you guys got questions, pop in. Thanks, brother. Thanks, guys.